Hi, my name is Jamie Locke. I'm a senior project engineer with DuPage County Stormwater Management. I have a civil engineering degree, bachelor in science from Michigan State University. We're currently standing in the Salt Creek watershed, home of the Elmhurst Quarry. If you're wondering how we got here today, it all started in the 1800s when a farmer named Lois Graw attempted to dig a well, but instead he found a limestone ridge that went all under the town of Elmhurst. In 1882, Farmer Graw sold 11 acres of this land to two businessmen named Adolf Hammerschmidt and Henry Asman. The two of them took that 11 acres, purchased it for a then hefty sum of $3,300 and created the Elmhurst Chicago Stone Company. They quarried limestone from El as part of Elmhurst Chicago Stone for quite a few years, which laid the foundations for many buildings and roads throughout the Chicagoland area. Then in the 1980s, they began to quarry for limestone underneath it. It also then became, shortly after, a landfill for clean construction debris. That occurred until about 1992, when DuPage County purchased a portion of the property for flood control purposes. The county decided to purchase the land after the 1987 rain event, where over 13 inches of rain fell in a four-day span, with 9.4 inches falling in 24 hours that was recorded at O'Hare Airport. That was the result of DuPage County realizing something needed to be done to controlling the widespread flooding. The Elmhurst Quarry Flood Control Facility was the very first facility built and still remains today as the largest facility owned and operated by DuPage County. Stormwater management has had an active role since 1992 until today to that we are capable of storing 8,300 acre feet of stormwater storage during a rain event. That equates to 2.7 billion gallons of water and it can fill up the Willis Tower more than seven times. Hi, I'm Sarah Hun, Director of DuPage County Stormwater Management. I've been with the department for 16 years and prior to being at the department, I worked for the Illinois Department of Transportation. My background is in civil engineering with an environmental focus, and I graduated from Michigan Technological University in Houghton, Michigan. As you can see behind me, we have Salt Creek, and Jamie talked to you about the flood of 87 and how thir over 13 inches of rain fell on DuPage County. After the flood of 87, our local elected officials went down to Springfield and were able to get the authority to be a regional stormwater management program. Once given that authority from the state of Illinois, we were able to develop a stormwater management department and then start developing watershed plans. Our first watershed plan that we worked on was a Salt Creek watershed plan, which included projects like you'll learn about today, the Elmhurst Quarry. In addition to the Elmhurst Quarry, there are other projects that were in the Salt Creek Watershed Plan, such as the Wooddale Itasca Reservoir, the Lewis Reservoir, the Eldridge Park Reservoir, and several other smaller, smaller reservoirs along Salt Creek. The DuPage County Stormwater Management staff continually monitors rainfall data as well as stream data to determine when the peaks of rivers like Salt Creek will happen. And when we learn they will happen, we go into our operation plan. As Salt Creek continues to rise, we watch a staff gauge like the one behind us. And when it reaches an operating elevation, we know to open the gates of Salt Creek. Once the gates are open, Water begins to flood in first through this seven by seven sluice gate, and then through what we call the concrete fixed weir, which is adjacent to the sluice gate. When the watershed plan was originally developed, not all projects were able to be constructed. One project up in Cook County called the Bussy Woods Dam did not get constructed until 2015. And so DuPage County was ready to modify the quarry's operating plan to incorporate the Bussy Woods Dam into the Salt Creek operating plan for flood control. And instead of having to do a large construction project, we were able to just bring a crane out and remove part of the fixed weir, which is behind us. Once the quarry is opened, you will see that the water elevations of Salt Creek quickly lower and we can begin taking in up to 1,600 cubic feet per second into the quarry. That's around 700,000 gallons per minute. Behind me is what's called the vortex drop shaft. Water that comes from the 7 by 7 sluice gate, which is adjacent to Salt Creek, and then through the two 10 by 10 gates, through a channel underneath us as we're standing right here, goes into what's called the vortex drop shaft. The vortex drop shaft is 80 feet in depth 
And then once it drops down through here, it travels 400 feet into what's called the west lobe of the quarry. A couple obstacles that, that the county had to deal with when designing the quarry was not only to lower the water down so it could enter the quarry at a safe level without eroding out the bottom of the west lobe, is that we also had to avoid two two jet jet fuel lines that service the O'Hare Airport, and both of those or both of those lines run underneath Illinois Route 83. Once water enters into the drop shaft, it spins around at a high rate of speed and reduces its energy before hitting the 400 feet foot chute to go into the west slope. If, if you were to stand on the drop shaft and watch this, it's really quite awesome. And you can feel an uplift of current as the air is displaced and will throw your hair straight up into the air. Hi, my name is John Blickham. I'm a graduate of Kishwaukee College. My background is in land surveying and geographic information systems. I've been working at the county now for over 10 years, and among other things, one of my responsibilities to, is to help maintain, manage, and operate the uh, Elmhurst Flood Control Facility. Uh, as you may already know, the quarry consists of two lobes, the east lobe and the west lobe. Uh, the lobes are separated almost perfectly down the middle by West Avenue here in Elmhurst. Um, and right now we're standing in the west lobe, on top of the dewatering pump platform. Below us, sitting in a wet well, are four nine-foot-tall, four-ton, 500-horsepower stormwater pumps that work in conjunction with the pumps on the east side to dewater the quarry after a flood event. But the water has to get in here first. Flood water enters the west lobe through a 400-foot tunnel that passes roughly 80 feet underneath Route 83 and after surging through that tunnel, the water then crashes into our plunge pool. That plunge pool helps to dissipate the energy, controlling the conveyance down a 70-foot wide, 10-foot high riprap channel through a keyway underneath West Avenue and into the East Lobe. The East Lobe is approximately 200 feet deep, while the West Lobe is anywhere from 100 to 140 feet deep. Before converting to a flood storage facility, the West Lobe was used as a clean construction debris landfill. The county came in, regraded, stabilized the banks, and capped the slopes on this side that you see today. Periodic maintenance of that clay cap is required to maintain its integrity. That requires removal of vegetation and woody debris. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Balzi. I'm the Water Quality Supervisor with DuPage County Stormwater Management. I've worked at DuPage County for about 17 years. I went to Northern Illinois University. I've got a master's in geography in natural environmental systems and soil science. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the quarry geology today. So if you look here over my shoulder, you can see starting at the top, there is a thin layer of soil that supports trees and other vegetation. That was formed relatively recently during the last ice age. So the most recent depositions were about 12,000 years ago. So that's a layer of glacial till, which is rocks, boulders, sand, silt, and gravel that was pushed into this area during the, the, the glaciation. Now over time that forms topsoil and you get the, the plants forming in it over time. And so it's a relatively thin layer as you can see. Now directly underneath that is the Silurian dolomite. The dolomite is formed from the limestone. So the limestone was mined out of the quarry and once the limestone interacts with magnesium rich groundwater, it forms the dolomite. And so that is the whole wall of the quarry that you'll see there. That's between 420 and 440 million years old. Now you'll notice that there's a big gap there. So the top layer is about 12,000 years old. The layer underneath that is about 400 million. And so there's a large layer that we don't have in this area. And that would have been the, the layers where you have the Jurassic period, the dinosaurs, things like that. Those have been removed from this area due to erosion, water, wind erosion over time. So we're missing those, those fun layers with the, with the dinosaur fossils in it, unfortunately, in this area. So we have the Silurian dolomite rock walls of the quarry, and those were formed from an ancient seabed. And so you can find some ancient sea creature fossils in there, cephalopods and corals gastropods, 
in that layer, you may find those fossils. And then that goes all the way to the bottom of the quarry, where you can see the, where basically the bottom of the rock wall there. And right beneath that is the Maquoketa Shale. That's a sedimentary mud deposit rock. And that's essentially where they, they stop the, the quarry mining operations. Now, after that time, the quarry was used as a landfill for construction debris. And so that kind of creates this hill here, you'll see over to the right. Now, once that landfill operation ceased, that was covered with about two feet of clay and topsoil and planted with, with grass. And so that's what it looks like today. It currently supports wildlife such as coyotes and red-tailed hawk to be found in this area. Hello everyone and welcome to the east lobe of the Elmhurst Quarry Flood Control Facility. My name is Chris Bonamy. I am the Deputy Director for the DuPage County Stormwater Management Department. Uh, and I've been with the department for about 30 years. That's a little longer than I like to admit. Uh, but I started with the county back in 1990 uh, after I graduated from the University of Illinois uh, at Urbana-Champaign with a Bachelor of Sciences degree in Agricultural Engineering and Agricultural Sciences. Uh, part of my agricultural engineering degree, uh, I focused on soil and water, and that is how I got my job with DuPage County as a civil engineer focused on their stormwater management and flood control. And he I'm here today to tell you about the east lobe of the Elmhurst Quarry. Before we get into that though, I know my friends and colleagues over on the other side, the west lobe side, like to say the west lobe is the best lobe, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, a couple reasons. We have the best scenic views over here on the east lobe side. Uh, it's the deeper lobe. It's where all the action takes place. This is where we store the majority of the flood water. Uh, this is where the fish are and other wildlife. And so, uh, and, and, and when we do these tours in person, this is the last stop on the tour. So it's, it's true what they say, we save the best for last. Uh, but right now we're in the southeast corner of the east lobe and we're looking west. Uh, you can see the West Avenue High Wall. Uh, West Avenue is what divides the, the quarry into two lobes, the East Lobe and the West Lobe. Uh, you can see over here on the left-hand side, the keyway. That is the keyway that joins the two lobes. Uh, here, the high walls are about 200 feet in height. Uh, over on the West Lobe side, they average about 120 feet in height. Uh, just to the left of the keyway, uh, that's the deepest part of the quarry. That's about 240 feet in, in height there or in depth. Uh, and that's the location of the East Lobe pump station. Uh, and you can see up top, you can see the uh, pump station platform up top. Uh, and, and, and that feeds, uh, there's a bunch of cables, uh, electric cables that feed the, the, the pumps at the very bottom. The pumps are actually underwater. Uh, but in this situation, we are, right now we're pumping, and this East Lobe pump station, uh, the pumps are underwater right now, uh, they feed that force main. You can see the force main uh, kind of along the high wall there. That feeds the bottom of the West Lobe pump station pit, and then the West Lobe pump station pumps the water all the way out to the aeration facility and on the east bank of Salt Creek. Uh, and, and that's what's going on right now. Uh, typically when we have a, a medium or small sized event, we only store water here in the East Lobe. Uh, in that particular case, when there's water in both lobes, uh, the West Lobe pump station kicks on and we dewater both lobes at the same time because they're connected with the, the keyway. Uh, we dewater that way until uh, the west lobe is completely empty. And then uh, again, when that side is empty, we kick the pumps on here on the east lobe and that will pump the water to the west lobe and then out to Salt Creek. And that's the way it, it progresses that way. Um, let's see, what else is gonna tell you? We also had a very major event in 2008. In 2008, both lobes were completely filled to the top basically did the top of the high wall. Uh, in that particular situation, uh, the quarry provided about 8,300 acre feet of storage for the Salt Creek watershed, which is about 2.7 billion gallons. And in that, in that situation, when we have that much water in the quarry, it takes about 72 days to completely dewater. And that was the reason why we had to put the aeration facility to re-aerate the water before it gets pumped back to Salt Creek. Typically, we like to leave about 10 to 15 feet of water in the bottom of the quarry, uh, and that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, there are fish that survive the trip into the quarry, and so we want to make sure that they have water in the bottom of the quarry to survive. 
Uh, another thing is that when flood water comes in, a lot of sediment and organic matter comes into the quarry also. It settles out and uh, a lot of times that doesn't smell so nice. So we like to keep water in the bottom of the quarry to keep those odors down. Uh, you can see around the perimeter of the quarry also, there's a lot of vegetation growing out of the side walls or the high walls. And, and that usually indicates a, a location where we have a groundwater seep into the quarry. Uh, and that's fine. We, we let that water kind of store in the bottom and then that allows us to exercise our pumps uh, to do routine maintenance on those pumps also. Okay, so another aspect I'd like to point out is there is an underground mine. Uh, back in the early 80s, uh, when the Elmer Chicago Stone Company had exhausted their, uh, their, their limits of what they owned, the land that they owned, uh, so they couldn't go any wider, they couldn't go any deeper because they ran into a shale layer. Shale is a muddy stone with no real economic value. And so they drilled through that, that shale layer, they drilled down 200 feet, the shale layer is 200 feet thick, and they found more dolomite down uh, um, underneath that shale layer. And so they started mining that in what's called room and pillar mining. And so they would blast out a 40 foot by 40 foot room, and then they would leave a solid 40 foot by 40 foot stone pillar, and then blast out another room and leave another pillar and another room and another pillar. And so that underground mine, it, it kind of looks like a checkerboard. It's very extensive. It extends under both the east lobe and the west lobe, under portions of the railroad tracks, all the way under Salt Creek, and even under portions of the K-5 asphalt plant. Uh, and it was quite an operation. They would do a blast. They had a crusher located uh, in the underground mine. So they would truck that stone over to the crusher, crush it up, and then it was brought back to the surface uh, through a, uh, a conveyor belt system that brought the stone. Uh, there was an excess mine shaft that went down at about a 45 degree angle into the underground mine. And it brought that stone through that conveyor belt system up to the surface mine where it was stored in the bottom of the quarry and then trucked away uh, in trucks wherever it needed to go. Uh, now, when we uh, purchased and converted the quarry into a flood control facility, we decided to close that mine off. So that is filled now with the, the, the mine shaft that's filled with concrete and a bulkhead. And uh, we have monitoring wells around the perimeter that show that the underground mine is still uh, dry to this day. Uh, now, there has been talk, we hear talk every once in a while about converting the underground mine into a hydroelectric uh, uh, facility to create electricity. Uh, and, and the concept there is that we would take and store water in the surface mine here, dump that through a ton, back through a, a mine shaft, uh, spinning a turbine with a generator to create electricity during the day when electricity is very expensive. And then at night we would pump that water back from the underground mine to the surface mine when electricity is a lot less expensive and then repeat the process the next day. Um, that's just a concept. There has been no formal plans to move forward with that, but that is, is something that is out there. And if it did become a formal plan, I'm sure that there would be many, uh, many public meetings uh, to go over that to make sure the public was aware of what was going on. Uh, one other thing I'd like to point out is we are in Elmhurst and uh, we, Elmhurst is a very good neighbor to us. It's the, obviously houses the, uh, the, the largest facility that we have. Uh, but we do have very good intergovernmental cooperation with the city of Elmhurst and their staff. Uh, a couple examples, well, one of the examples I'd like to share is that uh, back in 2017, uh, Elmhurst was experiencing some residential flooding in an area kind of north and east of the quarry. Um, it, not necessarily flooding from Salt Creek, but it was more of an urban flooding type of issue. And so they constructed a large 60 inch relief sewer to collect some of that flooding, the flood waters and we allowed them through that intergovernmental agreement to discharge that water into the east lobe. And that's where we're standing right here. If you get up on your tippy toes, you can kind of see the top of that 60 inch steel pipe that acts as the outlet uh, for that system. And so uh, when they constructed that, they also cleared this area of all the trees and vegetation. And Elmer's Hall also had to do a controlled blast to prepare the high wall for that steel pipe. Uh, but since they did all that work, we decided this is a perfect location to have an East Lobe observation platform. And with that, I'm gonna turn things over to my colleague. Hi, my name is Angela Lavernier. I'm a senior wetland specialist with DuPage County Stormwater Management. Um, I went to school at Eastern Illinois University and majored in botany. And then I went to the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and got a master's degree in natural resources, environmental sciences. So here we are at the quarry. We're at the um, demonstration BMP area, which BMP stands for Best Management Practice. 
And we have several things that we can discuss here. One being the permeable pavers. This is a small scale, obviously demonstration area, but the permeable pavers um, catch rainwater as it, as it falls and it percolates and holds it underground. And then it infiltrates at a slower rate. If you can imagine if this was asphalt, um, say a single family home or a business parking lot, um, the rainwater would just hit that area and just sheet off and go directly into the storm sewers, right into the river. So permeable pavers help slow that peak flow by holding the water in place for you know a designated time period. And it also will capture nutrients and do some pollution control as the water percolates into the ground, um, both biologically and chemically. Um, and then the other aspect of the BMP is our little rain, guard er rain garden area, which um, will collect water. It's a little depressional area, and we planted it with native prairie plants, um, which is better than turf grass. Turf grass has a very short uh, root system, only two or three inches, because we mow it and maintain it. So when water hits turf grass, it just sheet flows right off and goes wherever the topography takes it. In a rain garden situation, if you have native plants, they have very deep taproot systems, sometimes 10, 15 feet into the ground. So once the water hits this, the, the lower depressional area actually fills up with water for a you know, designated time period, but then those deep root systems really infiltrate the water and it will treat pollutants as it runs into those areas too. So like I said before, this is just a small demonstration area, but rain gardens can be much bigger, um, you know, as sized as needed to intake that water. And then also here we have solar panels, which we want to highlight. The solar panels actually run this camera that we have here and lights. So at any time during the day, um, this area can be monitored, the quarry can be monitored, the camera can turn and uh, you know, 180 degrees, whatever is needed to look at whatever's on site. So also at the demonstration garden, we have um, placards that discuss the history of the whole area and the quarry itself. Um, and it also a placard describing the rain garden and how they operate. Um, the quarry itself, since it's in the flyway of the major river system, it's a good opportunity and habitat for bird species. We have lots of natural areas along the river that used to be floodplain that are now prairie. Um, so there's a lot of nesting habitat along the riverway that we want to incorporate and maintain as stormwater management. Hi, my name is Claire Kassane and I'm the Water Quality Specialist with DuPage County Stormwater Management. I got my bachelor degree at University of Illinois in Champaign in Integrative Biology and I got my master's degree also at University of Illinois in Natural Resources and Environmental Sciences. Today I'm going to be talking about the water quality um, that we have here at the quarry. So the water that arrives into the quarry during a big rainstorm isn't very high quality. That's because we have a lot of runoff as we live in an urban area that has a lot of impervious area. So the water comes down, hits this impervious area, and picks up anything that's on the ground. So that could be things um, like gasoline, it could be salt, it could be things like fertilizer. Anything that's on the ground gets picked up during these storm events. Also during these storm events, the water can be rushing really quickly through the streams and the rivers, and that can pick up sediment from the um, stream bank. So with that um, erosion, the sediment is in the water, and so that, along with everything that gets picked up as runoff, ends up in the quarry during these um, rain events. And so the water sits in the quarry for a few days before we put it back into Salt Creek. One of the good things about it sitting in the quarry is that things like the sediment and some of the chemicals can either evaporate or settle to the bottom of the quarry before we return it back to the Salt Creek. One of the bad things though about the water sitting in the quarry is that dissolved oxygen can get very low. 
This is caused by the water not moving in the quarry by just sitting there. Um, the dissolved oxy oxygen can disappear. And also, if there was nutrients that was brought in from the rainwater, um, that can cause algae to grow, and that algae uses up oxygen. So after a few days of sitting in the quarry, the water is going to be very low in dissolved oxygen. So that brings us over here to the aeration facility. And this is where the water is pumped up from the quarry, goes through this aeration facility before entering Salt Creek. And the facility acts a lot like a riffle in a river, which is where there's a lot of rocks and it's usually kind of shallow. And that's where the water's turned around a lot. And that turning around of the water allows oxygen from the atmosphere to enter the water, and that's where dissolved oxygen comes from. So that's why we have these cascading steps. Um, that's to get more oxygen into the water. So we also check the water um, before and during, while it's being released into Salt Creek, to make sure that the oxygen levels are okay um, for fish and other animals that use it in the rivers. Um, and so far, every time we've returned it, it's been um, higher than the stream itself. So it's in good shape. Hi, my name is Kay McKean, and I am the founder and the executive director of a not-for-profit here in DuPage County called Scarce. We love to work with DuPage County Stormwater Department and provide education to DuPage County residents and students about water quality and water conservation. Today, we are at the aeration part of this whole system where we're putting oxygen back into the water so we can safely put it back into Salt Creek. In nature, we do this with riffles, as you've seen in rivers and streams, but here we've built this concrete structure to help put that oxygen back into the water to make the oxygen levels just what the environment needs as it goes back into Salt Creek. Thank you for taking the time today to take a virtual tour of DuPage County Stormwater Management's Elmhurst Quarry. I hope you've enjoyed the tour as much as we enjoy having the quarry as an asset for DuPage County. The quarry, as has been mentioned by many people, not only has been a benefit for many communities here in DuPage County, but has also saved taxpayers flood damages and funding in the millions of, in the range of millions of dollars. We're truly proud of this facility and I hope you can be proud of this asset as well.